on 90 straight home games. 50 points in the past. That's that's ridiculous. Incredible. That's insane. Um, Speaking of ridiculous and insane, how about a Virginia team going on the road to take on a North Carolina team that had won seven in a row after playing that heavyweight battle against Duke on Saturday and Seth coming out with a win tonight? Well, how about this? You know, we always talk about can Virginia play from behind? They were down seven (laughs) on the road. And you know what they did? They just continued to play. They got stops. The one thing about coming back, getting back in the game, if you can get stops, you have a chance to get back in the game. They got stops. They attacked the matchup. When Cam Johnson went out, they attacked that matchup, and I thought they did a really good job of getting DeAndre Hunter in the lane. He became a playmaker, and then Kyle Guy took it over. Kenny Williamson, suspect defensively. Can North Carolina sustain that pace defensively? Can they find that way to draw a line in the sand to be that team that we know they can be defensively each and every game. That's going to be the question. And there were times, look, it doesn't come down to one play, but at, towards the end of the game where Kenny Williams, there were some issues he had. And you're going to see right here, you're going to see Kyle Guy really, literally set Kenny Williams up. Just walk him down, call out a little play, walk him down. Now Kenny Williams standing straight up. He takes this shortcut, doesn't chase him around. Bang, Kyle Guy makes a three. Okay? Expands the lead to five. Now, as the possession goes on, next possession comes up once again. Comes off the screen, sets him up. Nothing there. And watch how he rolls him to sleep. Walks to the corner, puts his hand down. Kenny Williams stands up, laid on the trail. You got to be down in the stance. And it doesn't come down to two plays, but when you go back and you watch things like that, for Kenny Williams, who's a veteran, you have to be down in the stance and always be ready to be proactive when you guard a guy like Kyle Guy. And you're right. He, he's got to be locked. That's a simple roller place. You either tag in the roller or you stay at home, obviously, with a guy like Kyle Guy. The possession before, they were switching that down screen. Poor communication by North Carolina. They don't switch it out. He starts to get ball side because he's trying to switch up into it. Defensive mistake, but... Let's give Virginia some credit now. Oh, oh I'm giving I mean, yeah, like, give down my credit. the stretch, Virginia, they were physical defensively. They kept Kobe White in front. They contested shots. They defended without fouling. And then on the other end, instead of playing panicked when they were down seven, they just continued to play and do what they did. But they attacked matchups. And I don't think Tony Bennett gets enough credit for what they do offensively. Because I thought they did a really good job of attacking matchups. Cam Johnson went out. The ball was in DeAndre Hunter's hands. He made plays. They play put the, uh, the ball away from Kyle Guy, and he did a great job playing without the ball. So Carolina didn't do what they needed to do defensively, but Virginia, the big question's always been, can they play from behind? On the road at Carolina, they play from behind, they get a win. I think you're right. I think it's a boring narrative at this point that Virginia plays a slowdown, unexciting brand of offensive basketball. They scored 69 tonight. Is it boring? Oh, I, I, that's my point. Is it boring? I, mean, I don't it, think it, so. Is it, I, I, don't, I, I think it's a narrative that they will continue to get faced with until they win. Until they until a, they win it until they win a championship, get to the final four I, or a final four. Yeah, yes, it that, will be a narrative that will come. This is this is impressive. Team here. You talk about the four minutes with the game on the line to be able to do this to shut down Carolina on the road. That's big time. And look at the field goal, one for eleven, doing a great job of keeping it in front and contesting. Casey, I know it's a tall order, but uh, this is what happens when you dominate the ACC. People want you to win championships. They want you to get to final fours. Well, they won in Chapel Hill tonight, and they did it behind the play of Kyle Guy standing by with Allison Williams. Kyle, Carolina came out with a big second half, went up by as much as seven. What did you guys need to do to reset the direction of the game? Just need to keep playing our game and stay poised. I think that's something this team does very well and past teams have done too. Um, With our experience in the backcourt and the frontcourt, I think it's going to be really hard uh, to keep those kind of leads against us. So we just never wavered and never yielded. With the experience you guys have, and you mentioned the trust in that system, how high is it down the stretch for this team? Yeah, it's, I mean, ceilings is the size anybody's in the country. Um, Um... I wouldn't bet against us. I know that um, all my teammates feel the same way, and Coach believes in us. And, um, you know, this is a great win on the road. It was a great win on the road after a tough loss at home to Duke and a quick turnaround going Saturday to Monday. How difficult was that for you? Hey, nobody's ever given us anything. Anyone on this team, we're all, you know, blue-collar guys, and we work for, for what we've gotten. And, you know, schedule didn't do us any favors, but, you know, we just, we just battled through it. Kyle, thank you. Yep, thank you. Battled through it and came away with a big, big win. A kid special. Jay was physically threatening me during that interview. That's what America didn't get to see here. I'm <laughs> sorry, I don't, I don't think it's a boring brand of basketball. Do you, Coach? One, I love the My way. My comment wasn't play. towards boring. It was towards coming back from being down. It wasn't about being boring. I, 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 th- like I think what your biggest thing is you, until they get that monkey off their back, if they, until they get past the Elite Eight and get to a Final Four, then people are going to say that style of play can't get you to the Final Four. Now, me personally, if you can be... They're 28-3 and three in the ACC over the last two years. 
They just rolled into Carolina and won against a very good team that was 9-1 and one in the ACC. After two nights ago playing Duke. After two, mm-hmm. So to me, like I understand the narrative. Until they do it, you know, people are going to question, can this style win? And I go back to the same thing. Villanova won a national championship three years ago, playing a very similar style, except they shoot more threes. Mm-hmm. It's not the style of play. They, they, ran, they, they played poorly last year against UMBC, and UMBC and, played really well. And but you can win any style if you can impose your style on the game. Dante DiMincenzo, Amari Spellman, Jalen Brunson, uh, Mikel Bridges, four pros. Mm-hmm. Four guys that are playing in the league. Like, yeah, no, uh, I, I, I think Yadri Hunter. Ty Jerome. Ty Jerome, but they're, I mean, they're not yeah, the yeah, caliber I mean, of players that they over have. And I'm not saying that they can't get to the Final Four. They can get to the Final Four. All I'm saying is due to their pace and due to the style in which they play, it makes it more challenging if they get down in a game, double digits, to be able to come back at that fast clip. Now, did they help you? Did, it, did they change it did, but North Carolina back? gave this game away. Oh, I, I don't know about ooh, that. What? I wouldn't say that. They got stops and they got good offensive okay. positions. I'm, I'm, I'm not hating on you. I love UVA. I, mean, I love watching them play. I think away. North Carolina. No one gives it away. You got to go. And Cam Johnson doesn't get hurt. Road. I think it's a different scenario. Well, that's true, but that, that's and not giving it away. Cam Johnson. And Nas, and that's, those, that, those are two legitimate concerns. They played without two of their best players. You. Uh, much more on Get this Up This is here. why we love to talk bit. about this stuff. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? We want to remind America that you can see another one of these great ACC teams in action tomorrow night. It's our Sonic blockbuster. Jay Stern in the pot. We'll get to see number two Duke take on number 16 Louisville. 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN tomorrow night. It's amazing to me that the narrative about this Duke team last year was that they didn't defend. And this year, it's about how well they defend. That how exactly they played a weather vane 2-3 zone last year. <laughs> First off, I love that we're talking about Duke coming up to North Carolina exactly, again. Yeah, sure Carolina fans are going to love that. Love it, yeah. Well, how are they doing it this year? They're a total, because how hard they play. This is an elite defensive team. This reminds me of old school Duke defense. This reminds me of Tommy Amaker and your teams and Wojo. Are you talking about starts and pressure on the basketball? Trey Jones, but the versatility of this defense is what makes it special. They have the ability to switch. They have the ability to keep you out on the perimeter. There's a switch right there. Zion Williamson switched on the guard. Watch Trey Jones. Get up and under. Pressure the basketball. Turn the ball in his hands. Active hands. Zion gets out in transition. It's easy. Now you got a guy like Marcus Colby. He can switch out into a guard and still has the ability to keep it in front. They're still denying on the wings, making it hard for you to catch the ball. Here's another switch. And then Zion being Zion. Contesting the shot. Blocking the shot. Making the play. They are an elite defensive team. I think their starting five is one of the most talented starting fives there is in college basketball. Now, look, they can lose games. I think teams like Tennessee, Gonzaga, Virginia, potentially Kentucky, Michigan, there's some teams that can beat them. But what they're doing defensively, because of their versatility, them switching everything, those numbers speak for itself. Ten steals a game, I mean, the last five games. And they've been dominating defensively. Their ability to switch. Switching is really hard to play against. Now, obviously, if you can't contain the ball in front, it's not hard to play against, but their ability to switch one through five and then keep the ball in front and deny really puts a lot of pressure on people because it takes them out of their offenses. And Trey Jones is brilliant oh. defensively. He, he is anybody. He is brilliant defensively, just getting hands in there, being always in the right position all the time. He, he's a thought leader on the floor. They buckle down defensively, and they're shooting it much, much better lately. Oh, wait, wait, here's his look. They shot it incredibly. Sixty-two percent from Virginia. Shot the lights I mean, out here. They've got they're a thirty percent three-point shooting team that shot it really well against Virginia. I wonder how TCU is going to shoot the ball tonight. They've got the reigning Big Twelve Player of the Week in Desmond Bain coming. What a big, big matchup here for the Horn Frogs. Seth, they're coming off that huge road win Saturday at Iowa State. That hurt Jay. That, that, that hurt the two of us. I mean, we... Well, you know, I'm all about Baylor. You can't forget about Baylor, but this is a big-time three-point shooting team. They play four guys on the floor at all times. They can knock down a three. They play with excellent spacing. Bain can shoot the three. Galen Robinson gets in the lane and makes plays. They do a great job of spreading you out. All right? And they're a very good passing team. This is a TCU team that can really score and when you think for KU, look, you, there's no you don't pass a bookie. Legero Vic takes a leave of absence from the team. Marcus Garrett is battling injuries. And uh, Obaji is one of the most really athletically freaky players we have in this game. And it, look, the way he scored in their last game, I think it came off, you know, 20-plus points. This kid has the range. But no one else, no, I love about Seth. He just plays with energy. And it, 
And I, I, I've said this before, and a lot of people don't get it. Playing with energy 24 7, that's a skill set people don't always bring to the table. With that size, that length, the versatility he allows them to have on a defensive end, his ability to attack the rim and knock down jumpers. Like, they didn't skate. They need that. They right need now. that. Because, I agree with you. Know, it. Let's face it, they, they're missing a lot. I mean, LeGerald Vick was a 46% three point shooter. He's gone. They need someone to step up. They're playing a freshman backcourt. Now they just took him off a redshirt year. So, I mean, they need some energy because they have a very small margin of error because they don't have anyone really can put pressure on the defense yep. at the rim. They stink on the road up, up until this point anyway. Can, can, can they win tonight at TCU? Yes. I Will they, they win tonight? Will, they, the will they win is a different question. <laughs> would you, would you, I don't will know. they I'm, win I'm, tonight? Yes. I'll go okay. I got the Horn Frogs. All right, TCU. Eight straight so home home right conference right wins. They get the Kansas Jayhawks. You get to hear Bob with shoes and, and Fran Fraschilla enjoy. All right, Kevin, thanks very much. It is indeed a sellout tonight here at Schulmeyer Arena. They've been waiting weeks for this Kansas showdown. Appropriate. Everything's big in Texas. We're real happy to be here.